Daphne and Chloe, the solo uh, from that piece is probably the longest flute solo you'll play in the orchestral repertoire, I think quite possibly. Um, the first thing that can go wrong is the scale at the beginning. It's one of those psychological things. When you look, they are, um, I don't know, they've got four lines, what, hemi, demi, semi, Bemi, I don't know, Zemi quavers. I've heard many, many people try to play it too quietly, and I think that really is a mistake. It's only piano, and it says expressively. So I don't think that you need to worry about it being too quiet. Now, we've got this rush up to the B. Now, this is really where, you know, this is a sort of a love thing. It's, a, it's something you need to now... It, we've had all the difficult stuff up in the top register, and this is the moment where you can really just let the sound open. It's marked forte, now, and it's again here. P and it's, uh, no, P, 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 in fact. So it's really quiet. The crescendo doesn't start until the second half of the bar. Yet time and time again I hear there's life and you have to try and think of something you can do with your flute that doesn't just make it sound like a nice flute. <laughs> so sometimes it needs to sound nasty. Sometimes, like, sometimes it needs to sound horrible. And other times it needs to sound like the angels are coming through the clouds, you know? So there are all sorts of things, but think of the music, don't think of the flute in the sound world.